If we start with a profit maximizing production plan, where these two equations hold, we've shown where in this graph the substitution and scale effects are going to move us to in the long run as input prices change, so as the wage or the rental rate either rises or falls. When the wage increases, for example, we said we want to substitute away from labor and towards capital, and that's going to put us on a steeper cost minimizing rate. But an increase in the wage will also mean that our marginal costs are increasing, and that will cause us to want to produce less, less than this isoquant. So an increase in the wage will cause the firm to choose a new production plan that lies somewhere in this region. We want to now see if we can be a little bit more precise by splitting what happens into the short run and the long run. Where in the short run, capital is fixed, so you can only operate on that horizontal slice in the short run. You can move to the left by letting some workers go, you can move to the right by hiring additional workers, but you can't move up or down because capital is fixed in the short run. So let's return to the case of an increase in the wage. When wage increases, we can immediately see that this first equation will no longer hold. This side goes up and this side is unchanged. So an increase in the wage will cause the marginal revenue product of labor to be less than that new higher wage. The last worker hired did not raise total revenue sufficiently to justify the cost of that worker. So the firm is going to want to let some workers go, move to the left in this picture. So in the short run, the firm will reduce labor and will do so until this equation is back in balance, until price times marginal product of labor is once again equal to the wage, that higher wage. So the mechanism by which that happens is that when we, do, when we reduce labor, we're moving up the marginal product of labor curve. As we move up that marginal product of labor curve, marginal product of labor is rising. So as this rises, this gets brought back into equality. So a decrease in labor necessarily means that the marginal product of labor has increased. The firm is then going to settle into a new production plan where it hires less labor, but the same level of capital because that's fixed in the short run. But it is changing production plans, and whenever you change production plans, you're almost certainly changing the marginal product of capital. And if we change the marginal product of capital, then the second equation will be out of balance. Now the marginal product of capital might go up, or it might go down. So let's think for a second what it is about production processes that might put us on one side or the other of this. Suppose you had a factory where there was an assembly line where robots and workers are working and doing roughly similar things. Well, in that case, labor and capital are relatively substitutable in production. And if labor is becoming more productive, then capital will also become more productive because the robots are just like the workers. What happens to one must be happening to the other as well. So this will happen if labor and capital are relatively substitutable. Now think of a different firm where you have graphic designers come together with computers to produce graphic designs. So here the capital, the computers, are working together with the graphic designers. They're relatively complementary, unlike the robots and the workers on the assembly line. Well now, if I'm letting graphic designers go, and I keep the number of computers fixed in the short run, then I'll have a bunch of computers that are standing idle, or that at the very least are being underused. That means the marginal product of those computers, the marginal product of capital, is falling. So this second case happens when labor and capital are relatively complementary. Notice what happens. As the marginal product of labor goes up because we've reduced labor, in the one case it leads to an increase in marginal product of capital, 
because labor and capital are relatively substitutable. In the other case, it leads to a decrease because they're relatively complementary. If we're in this first case and marginal product of capital is going up, then the marginal revenue product of capital, price times marginal product of capital, will now be greater than the rental rate. We've increased the marginal product of capital. Which means that when the time comes and we can adjust capital, we're going to want to increase capital. The last unit of capital, the last robot, increased my total revenues by more than it would, would it cost. If we're in this case, on the other hand, the marginal product of capital is falling, then the marginal revenue product of capital will be less than the rental rate. The last computer is producing less additional revenue than what it costs me. So when the time comes for me to be able to adjust capital, in this case, I'm going to reduce capital. So if labor and capital are relatively substitutable, then when the time comes, we're going to move into this space up here. If, on the other hand, they're relatively complementary, we're going to end up moving into this space down here. Now, when capital increases, we're moving down the marginal product of capital curve, which means that the marginal product of capital is falling. If we reduce capital, we're moving up the marginal product of capital curve. So that means marginal product of capital is increasing. So now we end up at some new production plan, either up here if they're relatively substitutable or down here if they're relatively complementary. But by changing the production plan from the short run plan, we're almost certainly changing the marginal product of labor. Just as we've brought that equation back into balance, it's out of balance again. But the question is, which way is it out of balance? Well, we know that if labor and capital are relatively substitutable, Marginal product of labor and capital are moving in the same direction. Marginal product of capital is falling here, which means that marginal product of labor will fall as well. In this case, on the other hand, marginal product of labor and marginal product of capital move in opposite directions. So when the marginal product of capital goes up, the marginal product of labor will also go down. So regardless of which branch of this tree we come down, marginal product of labor will fall when we move from this short run production plan to the new long run production plan. And that means that we're going to reduce labor further. We're going to reduce labor beyond what we did in the short run. So this initial reduction was in the short run, but in the long run, we'll get an additional reduction in labor because of this declining marginal product of labor once we adjust capital. So now we can draw what the short and long run labor demand curves look like. So we would labor on this axis and the wage on this axis. We started with some initial wage which led us to hire a certain amount of labor, this labor. Then we increase the wage, and we notice that the higher wage in the short run will reduce the amount of labor. So connecting these, we can get the short run labor demand curve. But then we said in the long run, we're going to get an additional reduction in labor. So in the long run, at that higher wage, we'll hire even fewer workers. So that means the long run demand is going to be flatter than the short run demand. Or we can say the labor demand is more wage elastic in the long run than the short run. 
we could even draw another kind of demand curve. A demand curve for capital as wage changes. So we could call this a cross price demand curve because what's on this axis is wage, not the rental rate. We started at the initial wage with a certain amount of capital, this level of capital. Then the wage went up. And when labor and capital are relatively substitutable, that implied that capital went up. So capital went up as wage went up, and we get an upward slope here. If, on the other hand, labor and capital are relatively complementary, then we saw that capital falls as a result of the increase in the wage. So we'd get less capital than before, and we'd get a downward slope here. 